Hi, and welcome to Journey Forward with Jory Rose, where you will gain insights, tools, and inspiration to get unstuck and live your best life. Jory is a licensed marriage and family therapist with a passion for helping people cultivate awareness and authenticity so they can show up fully in all aspects of their life. And now, here's Jory. Hey everyone, welcome back to Journey Forward with Jory Rose. I've got my friend Lindsay O'Neill here with me today, and we have such a fun, random way that we met and connected, and we set so many intentions in those few moments, sitting at the airport in Fort Lauderdale. (laughs) So (laughs) Lindsay and I were actually sitting next to each other at two different tables at an airport restaurant uh, about for me to fly home from an Abraham Hicks cruise. And Lindsay was about to fly home back up to New York. And we struck up a conversation and there was so much alignment and just knew we were meant to sit and connect and become friends. And now here we are. So Lindsay, thanks so much for joining me and for being here. Please introduce yourself. I know we have so many things we want to talk about, but let's start with who you are and what has been your journey forward to get you to this moment and what uh, what light you're bringing to the world. Oh, that is such a great way to open it up because we did have such a uh, a, a and a beautiful first meeting. And since I met you, you have been such a bright light in my mm-hmm. world. So I really, I really do appreciate you inviting me here today. So I'm, I'm Lindsay O'Neill. I am the founder of smallhinges.health. The whole concept behind small hinges is that you don't have to change everything to change everything in your health mm-hmm. your and your life. Um, I went through a very significant uh, traumatic uh, accident about nine years ago. And you actually, when you met me, I was with Bryn, my daughter, my youngest daughter. So my youngest daughter is eight. I have three daughters, uh, three amazing daughters who are 12, 10 and eight. And Bryn, who's my youngest, I was actually hit by a car when I was pregnant with her. Um, Mm -hmm. so almost nine, nine years ago. And this set me as it does into as, as it does any traumatic injury or pain that we go through typically sets us on a new path, a new journey in our life. And this particular accident sent me on a, a path to find out about my health and then eventually mm. uh, to be thro- to be in the throes of as a parent into my daughter's health as well. And as you know, as a parent, we'll pretty much do the bare minimum <laughs> to, mm. for life and health. But when it comes to our children, we'll pretty much journey to the end of the earth and yes, back. For sure. And that that journey is not ending. It's just continuously evolving and growing. And um, you actually posted something on Instagram a couple of days ago when you were in Costa Rica about the last nine months of your life. And I feel like not just for for you and for me, for a lot of people, the last nine months since kind of the middle of 2022 have been really transformative for a lot of people. Yeah. And yes. so that's that's kind of what we're gonna we're gonna chat about today. But prior to that, um, I worked in AI and machine learning for programmatic media operations as an executive in tech for 20 years. Oh, and, wow. and after that that accident, uh, my whole life changed because. I, I refocused, I refocused my energy on needing to become healthy again, um, so that I could take care of my three daughters. And essentially the, you know, when you refocus what you're driving towards your journey into the future, your journey forward (laughs) in Mm -hmm. life, you typically go on a different path and that path may or may not be with your part with the same partner. It may or may not be with the same family and friends. Um, And sometimes you have to go on that that journey alone. And a lot has changed in the last several years of of my life. But really, the journey wasn't even specific for me. It was a journey so that I could learn that healing is complicated. It's expensive. Mm. Yes, it is. And it doesn't necessarily end well for everyone. You know, the, the whole concept of healthcare is really not even something that I recognize to be uh, 
a journey to health. It's really more about your journey in sickness. And a lot of people get very overwhelmed. They can go broke trying to get healthy again. And I, I was one of those people who lost a lot. I lost my mm-hmm. career. I lost my, my marriage and I did not want to lose my life to this illness. And so setting out on this journey, I, I didn't really know what to do or what to expect. And so I, uh, I worked with a bunch of allopathic doctors, traditional medicine doctors to identify what was going on with me. I ended up getting diagnosed with rupus, which is rheumatoid arthritis mm-hmm. lupus. Like all my hair fell out. I had a fever for 10 mm-hmm. weeks. I couldn't get out of bed. I was so massively fatigued. I had crushing chest pain, which caused me to go to the hospital several times. And all of this while trying to work full time and in tech and then take care of three little girls who were newborn, (laughs) um, two and four. So my goodness, it was wild, but I'm not the only person who's gone through this. I just happen to have a lot of resources around me and, and also have utilized data for my career. And so what I found was the best way to navigate your journey in your health and your life is to gather data, to gather bio-individual data Mm. on on yourself. And of course, being a a data nerd and working in tech, you know, I, I wanted to find the most efficacious data. And so I started to research different tests and modalities, because now there's like a million different genetic tests. There's a million different food inflammation tests and allergy tests that you can do. And there's a bunch of doctors who kind of know what they're doing. And so anyway, when my daughter got sick, when my daughter started to get sick, I thought, well, there's got to be something better for her to do as well. And that's when I got certified in culinary medicine. I did Mm. a program through the Harvard School of Public Health. And um, that was a really eye-opening <laughs> uh, program because it was for doctors and all oh, of these wow. doctors were sitting there, th- you know, like kind of doing what you're doing. Like, oh, wow. Oh, we didn't know that food could be used to help heal people. We didn't know that what you put in your mouth actually can make you sick or make you healthy. Um, and it was wild to see all of these doctors kind of going through the same eye-opening journey because we typically look to our doctors to, to help us on this journey to healing. And, um, the doctors that were in that room are really the ones that you should be seeking (laughs) because (laughs) you're looking at more than just medicine and surgery to help people heal. And that's a set. Yeah. It seems like very much a a holistic approach or an integrative approach that there's not just that Western model of treat the symptom and not actually get curious about the root or different ways to live. Exactly. And when you start to become kind of like a, a, a journeyer in, in your own life and, and ask questions and start to advocate for yourself as a, as a patient, And you find those amazing doctors who are looking at things from different perspectives. That's, and that's what happened for us. We found a magical unicorn of a doctor who happens to be five miles away from our house. Um, And he, you know, he threw so many different things at us, um, including this crazy medical cleanse that I, I went through. There's no way I could have put my daughter through that at age three. Um, but that just set me on a totally different way of thinking about things. And what did some of that medical cleanse include? <laughs> I had to remove pretty much everything from my diet. So nightshades, which are peppers and tomatoes and eggplant, um, all meat, all fish, all dairy, all gluten, all sugar. Um, so like no condiments, um, no refined oils. So a little bit of olive oil here and there. I could have rice, certain vegetables. So some root vegetables, but not all. Um, and this was a three week cleanse that really takes about three months to reintegrate the foods back into your diet. So you have to be really mindful when you're putting foods back in and eat the purest form of these foods and organic and, you know, wait every four days to put them back in. So it was really, it was a really tough cleanse. I actually ended up in Costa Rica because I had a mental breakdown. <laughs> wow. This cleanse. 
And my ex-husband was uh, very nervous for, for me. I, I've never had that type of mental break um, before. But I, sometimes when you break, you're not necessarily breaking down, you're breaking through. And I didn't really realize that Absolutely. at the time. And so I, I was breaking through the other side of health. And I was able to completely reverse all of my autoimmune conditions, which is, wow. I feel so blessed to have put been put on that crazy cleanse. But then after I came out of it, I, I looked at myself in the mirror and a healthy version of myself. And I said, there has to be a better way to do this because <laughs> yeah. there's, there's not a lot of people who would sign up for that type of crazy cleanse pain. And that was kind of the genesis of small hinges. Um, and then for my daughter, there was no way for, to put her on that type of cleanse. So I found a very efficacious test out of uh, right outside of Boston, a company called KBMO Diagnostics. And um, you can actually do a finger prick test on yourself and you can test for what foods are causing an inflammatory response in your body. Wow. And then you just strategically remove those specific foods, not all of the foods like I did, um, but those specific foods. And that's kind of the cornerstone of my practice. And you can call them. You can go to KBMO Diagnostics and ask for the small hinges test. You can um, you can go on my website, smallhinges.health and check out that test. It's It's so helpful to know your data because once you know your data, you can make those small strategic changes instead of making big swath changes. Yeah. And, and I know that you've been through a journey in the last nine months. And typically when I talk to people who have been through either an emotional breakdown, physical breakdown, um, and have gone through some sort of transformation, nine months seems to be the like time frame. I don't know if you found that too. Well, and isn't there, gosh, there's so much I want to be able to come back and comment on, but before we do just to, just to stay really present with where you're at, because you, you've shared so much already, Lindsay, but isn't it fascinating that nine months is also the gestational period, right? If we think about pregnancy and then, you know, birthing. And so there does seem to be this magical, but yet not magical because of course, <laughs> right? Alignment of this period of growth to rebirth. Mm. It is. I, I, for the last nine months, so backing up, you know, obviously a physical trauma can cause a, an autoimmune response where your body just kind of goes into shock. And that's essentially what happened the first time around for me. Um, and we then pause on that for one second for people yeah. who may not fully understand that autoimmune disease, you know, it's, it's so confusing to know what are the organic or quote medical causes to autoimmune. I've heard different doctors say there's no such thing as autoimmune as far as a medical basis, right? Autoimmune is a result of inflammation. Or if you look at, you know, Dr. Gabor Matei's work, he says it's going to be rooted in trauma. So to what you just said, and I think more and more and more is it becoming a uh, universal belief and not just whether it's Eastern medicine or holistic or integrative medicine, but this mind body connection is absolutely undeniable. Mm. How we can think that our physical symptoms are not rooted in our entire gestalt process of our, of our health and our life. I mean, it seems ridiculous to assume we can siphon off different systems of our body when everything is connected. Well, I'll tell you a little anecdotal story because I, I love this type of nerdy science stuff. So there was a study that was done by a university with donuts. So they, they got a thousand people to put glucose monitors on them. They blindfolded them. And these doctors told the thousand people, we're going to feed you two donuts. One is going to be a super fattening I forget the brand. I think it was like Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme donut. And we expect that your glucose is going to jump, but we really want you to stay focused on the taste of this donut. Okay. And then the next week, we're going to give you another donut that we've been genetically working on to try to mimic the same taste of this amazingly delicious donut, but it's going to have no sugar 
and very little carbs. And so we expect that your glucose is not really going to spike. It's going to stay pretty normal. And so what happens? So the first time around, they give them this delicious donut. They're blindfolded. They're tasting this donut. Oh my God, it's so good. It's delicious. It's creamy. It's sugary. And their glucose spikes, just like the doctor said it was going to happen. They wait a week. They come back down to baseline. They do the same thing. Now they're eating this donut and they're tasting it. And they're like, wow, this is actually pretty good for a healthy donut. I forget what they told them. It was made out of like carrots or something. <laughs> um, this actually tastes like they did a pretty good job in nailing the taste of this donut. It tastes just like the donut from last week, but their glucose didn't spike. And if it, you know, if it went up a little bit, it came back down pretty quickly. At the end of the test, I think 99% of people um, had the same results, basically. It, you know, their their glucose didn't really spike on the second donut. And they told everyone at the end, well, you know what? We gave you the same donut. We just told you something different. And so we we are programming our minds. And by programming our minds, we're able to control our bodies. Yeah. And so one of the, the main things that we practice at Small Hinges is we have four M's. <laughs> so we have mindfulness, we have meals, we have movement, and then we have magic. And the magic mm -hmm. part is the fun part. It's the part that I've been working in for the last couple of months um, with this company, Immortal. And Immortal, if you go to immortal.com, I'm a partner in this business. It's a, it is like magic. It uses pulse electromagnetic frequencies from the earth to help stimulate ATP. And I could go into all of the weird scientific jargon about that, but basically it's, it's a way to heal your cells. Wow. Like you would be in Costa Rica, forest bathing for, you know, a whole week and you'd come back feeling rejuvenated. Um, that's the magic. And, you know, obviously we can, we can change our diet, right? We can change the meals and the beverages that we're drinking. We can swap out sugar, sweetened stuff for healthier beverages. We can limit our alcohol intake, although, you know, we don't want to <laughs> because it helps <laughs> with our mindset sometimes. Um, but with our mindset, there's so much that we can do to trick our mind yeah. and, and to really fill our hearts. Andy Andrews writes really great books. I don't know if you've read his books. Um, I recommend you read his books. So he wrote a book called The Noticer. And hmm. one, one of the parts in this book, uh, the guy who the, the book is focused on is this guy named Jones. And he's kind of like an Abraham Hicksy type of type of character. And I don't know if you've read Sarah, which are the, the children's mm -hmm. books by uh, Esther Hicks. Totally you told right. me about those because when we were sitting at the airport with your daughter, we were talking about Abraham Hicks. You told me about those children's books, which I just love to introduce the mindset conversation to young kids. Yes. So, so this, that's a very similar character in this book. Um, in the Abraham Hicks books, it's a guy named Sol. It's a, it's actually a, uh, an owl named Solomon. And in, in the Andy Andrews book, The Noticer, it's a gentleman named Jones. And um, and he he helps people to reframe their perspective and shape shift their mindset. And mm -hmm. it doesn't just have a an emotional impact on people and an impact on their life and their lifestyle, but it can also have an impact on their health. And one of the things that uh, I practice with my kids and practice for myself um, is every morning and every night before I go to bed, we practice grief, just being grateful. And we do this by praying. We pray for what we're grateful for. And we ask the universe, God, what we want. Mm -hmm. And typically it's what we want for other people, but it's also really important to pray for yourself for what you want, because sure. if you are not feeling happy, if you're not feeling well, if you're not feeling energized, if you're not feeling like you're living your life on a strong foundation, it's really hard to move forward, right? To Absolutely. Well, and you'll continue to see the road through that lens, right? It 
you know, I wrote a book, a gratitude book that came out in 2021 of its um, daily practices and affirmations and um, mindfulness and meditation practices. And it, it's, it's literally for me, the gratitude is the lens through which we see the world. Yeah. And if we're feeling stuck, if we're stuck in unhealthy patterns of our minds, if we're stuck in unhealthy patterns of relationship, if we're stuck in, you know, even just doing things we don't like to do every day, that everything is going to be affected by the lens through which we see. Right. So yeah. That gratitude practice is often underrated in its impact. And that's not easy. It's not always easy to feel gratitude. You know, I, nine months ago, I went through a significant traumatic breakup with someone who I thought I would be with for the rest of my life. So I just finalized the details of my divorce and was in this, in the throes of this amazing relationship with someone who was taking care of me. And I didn't know anything about anxious attachment. I didn't know anything about, um, you know, filling up my soul and the things that I thought that I needed with another person. And I have never really been alone. I went straight from dating my ex-husband to marrying my ex-husband to breaking up with my ex-husband and meeting this person. And so for the last Mm -hmm. 20 plus years, I have not been single, nor have I been alone. And I have three children and I have a dog and I have a very active social life. I've got lots of clients. Um, I, I am never alone. And for the first time, not only would I, was I alone, but I was doubly heartbroken and felt like I wasn't chosen by either my husband, by my boyfriend. And I had to really get to a place of gratitude in order to start to fill the hole of anger, of fear, Mm -hmm. of loneliness, of self doubt, um, of guilt I mean, guilt yeah. and sh- guilt and shame after a breakup like that. I mean, I lost 14 pounds, which if you wow. see me on my Instagram at small hinges, you'll see, I don't have 14 pounds to lose. And a lot of my content is actually me too skinny. I was not nourishing myself. And once I read that for one line in that book, the noticer that says, you know, fear has no place. Hatred has no place guilt has no place in a grateful heart. Mm -hmm. I knew that I had to do whatever I could to practice gratefulness every day. And I don't, I don't, I, (laughs) I fail. Sometimes I get tired or sick or I just want to be angry. There Mm -hmm. are times where I just allow myself to Kvetch. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's it's about gratitude for your anger at that moment. So like, but that that's the thing, you know, can I be grateful that I'm being authentic right now? Right. I would still say that's gratitude. It doesn't always have to mean things are going well. Yeah. Because perhaps that anger is serving you because we know if we repress it, that's only going to lead to other problems. So it's not about suppressing what's hard. Can I be grateful that I'm allowing what's arising to exist without me judging it? Right. And also being grateful for the way that I'm showing up in life, that I'm showing up for myself and how other people in my life continuously show up. Because, you know, what we what we what we would love is to pray away all of the the negative ways that someone has treated us or someone has acted. But in in actuality, it's probably what we should be the most grateful for. Mm -hmm. should be the most grateful that they're showing up in the same way over and over and over again, because it's allowing us to finally learn the lesson. Pain can be our best teacher if we allow it to be. Oh yeah. If we allow it, oftentimes we're too much in resistance of it to actually get the lesson. And it's the same with our physical health as well. You know, I have a lot of clients who they I have to ask them, I have this pretty intense intake survey that allows me to get a really clear picture of someone's mindset, because Mm. I'm not going to tell you to make a small hinge change, even if it's a tiny little change, if I don't think you want to do it or you're ready to Mm -hmm. do it. And a lot of times people will stay in the pain, not necessarily because they 
their sub their conscious is saying, Oh, I want to, I want to be in pain. Yeah. I want to be, you know, obese and I want to have, you know, fluid in my knee. And I want to, you know, I want to have type two diabetes and I want to have heart disease and I want to have autoimmune. Nobody actually really wants to have that, but somewhere in our subconscious, which we only access about five to 8% of our, of our conscious brain of our mind. And the rest is all subconscious. So we have to use other modalities, right? So mm-hmm. some people are using meditation. Some people are using prayer and gratitude. Some people use plant medicine <laughs> to get mm-hmm. into the subconscious. Some people use hypnotherapy. Um, I use a little combination of, of all of them to get into my subconscious so that I can address whatever is keeping me rooted in pain. Because sometimes pain mm-hmm. can comfortable. Sometimes yeah. pain can be comfortable. And I see this over and over and over again with my clients. And many times, you know, we have to work on those two other things, not the meals and the movement, like every other wellness coach on the planet. Um, actually, I have to ask you this question. So do you know how many wellness coaches there are in LinkedIn? If you type in, I have no idea. 175,000 wellness coaches wow. in the United States. So and that's just the ones on LinkedIn. <laughs> that's the ones I that how to use LinkedIn. I'm sure there's probably another, you know, 25,000. So there's probably over 200,000 wellness coaches and, you know, integrative nutrition and all these other wellness coach uh, online. They're like cranking out these people, um, which it's great that there's so many people that want to help others but it's really getting to the root of why am I stuck in my pain? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how do, how do you set up a, a strong foundation for yourself so that as you heal, you don't go back down to the basement level. You don't go back down to baseline. You can start to almost visualize it as taking small steps and building those steps into like cement so that when you yeah. are walking up those steps, <clears throat> not made out of sand, right? You're really laying a strong foundation. And, and that's one thing that I, I found not many practitioners do doctors, wellness coaches, healers, um, because it's hard to get someone to do that. You almost have to do it for yourself. You have to really do it for yourself. You can't rely on somebody else to do it for you. (laughs) Well, and a lot of people, honestly, Lindsay, I see a lot of people who want the result of the work when it's done, but they don't want to have to do the work to get there. Right. Right. They want the, the sense of wellness or wholeness or healing to have occurred, but that's a really hard, messy road. Yeah. You know, I mean, before, before you and I hit record, I was, you know, telling you about my week in Costa Rica. And if I had just told you, Oh, you know what? I, I'm doing great. I feel so aligned. I feel good in my body. I feel great in my partnership. That would not have given, what did the big messy road of the last nine months look like in order to get there? (laughs) Right. It, it, you know, it would miss the actual depth and the gems of self-discovery through the fucking pain. I mean, it's been a wild ride of breaking down the layers and the layers and the layers to get really curious of, wow, that's fascinating. Look how I show up in the world and it's not really working. Well, let's peel back those layers some more. Right. And not, not everyone's open and available for that. And that's totally fine if you're not. And sometimes you have no choice, but to be in the midst of the throes of it, right? You know, we don't necessarily choose to go down that dark night of the soul path. But sometimes life just throws us that curveball, and we have a choice. I can continue to repeat these unhealthy patterns and suffer, or I can look at them and, you know, get on that path of healing and wellness. It's not for the weak minded or, you know, <laughs> wary of spirit because it's, it's a lot of hard work. And, you know, to your point, and most people don't address it, one of the questions I always ask my clients is, how is it serving you to stay stuck? And they'll say, it's not serving me at all. Okay, well, that's the, you know, the surface level answer. Yes, we know it's not serving you. And yet there's a secondary benefit we're gaining by staying stuck. It's familiar, it's habit, it's comfortable. I don't have to actually do anything different or make any new conscious choices 
or maybe it's keeping us connected to family of origin or a certain circle of people that we don't want to lose, but yet maybe they're toxic for us, right? So we have to get curious about that secondary benefit of staying stuck if we're going to be willing to want to get to the healing part. You know, I learned that in September. So I I started seeing a hypnotherapist after this big dramatic breakup in August. And um, around that time, my oldest daughter was starting middle school and she had a hell of an integration into middle school. It went from, there's four elementary schools that feed into one middle school. It's all these kids, you know, she's got an IEP. She's, she definitely has anxiety. She's just, she's a crystal child. So she feels everybody's emotion. And I mean, the hormones raging in middle school and like just the girls and it was terrible and my youngest daughter um had really come so far in her healing we had been doing biofeedback so basically because of a medication that I took while I was on bed rest after I got hit by a car she was born with low muscle tone and not just kind of her fine motor muscles even though she does do um she does do occupational therapy for writing and, and to strengthen her core and other things. But um, she she does biofeedback, which is pretty cool. Like she'll like put leads all over her bottom half and she plays a video game basically with her pelvic floor. Mm. Every, wow. every postpartum mom should be doing this. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's really amazing. We do it with Yale Pediatrics up in, um, in Greenwich, Connecticut, and they are such an amazing practice. We've tried every like medication. I got certified in culinary medicine. I got certified as a wellness coach. Like I, I've changed her diet a million times. I've done all this testing on her and we were just, she was stuck. And so she was seven years old in September. And I said, you know what? I asked my ex-husband, I said, you know, I'd like to have her do hypnotherapy. I've been, I've been doing it to, I've done therapy my whole life. And, um, that's, like a whole other another podcast, we would definitely yeah. need a bottle of wine and um, <laughs> seven hours to go through my whole my childhood, my background. But I thought, you know, something is keeping her stuck, and so I, I let's just try to address what it is. So we we found this amazing uh, pediatric hypnotherapist. She's actually in Portugal, and I'm like, wow. I don't know if it's gonna work. This is on Zoom, but we're gonna try it, right? So she's actually on the couch behind me. She's laying on my lap and we get about 20 minutes in and she is deep in, in her subconscious and she's seeing stuff. And, and, um, the hypnotherapist asked her, so, you know, Bryn, what do you think about this illness of yours? And my daughter at seven years old goes, well, I think it suits me. I think it suits me. And the, the therapist asked her, well, tell me a little bit more about that. She goes, well, I get time with mommy. I get taken out of school early for doctor's appointments. I get special treats. I get to have, you know, um, food that my sisters don't get to have. And like the, there was all these secondary benefits to your point. Wow. In her, the, the pain. And so she was subconsciously keeping herself in this painful state. So fast forward, she's done two sessions now, all of a sudden she's not exhibiting any symptoms. Wow. (laughs) None of the symptoms that we've been dealing with for five years. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to really double down on this type of therapy. And my oldest daughter, actually, we had her do it too, to help with her panic attacks. Cause she had panic attacks for the first two months, almost every night of middle school, middle school sucks. <laughs> it, 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 it definitely does. <laughs> After, having raised two daughters. Yes. Middle school is hard. Yeah. And I I've got my get all that much better, but it does. <laughs> yeah. My, my middle, my middle daughter is actually going to middle school next year. And I'm happy she's going because she'll take, she'll protect my older daughter. <laughs> <laughs> when she's there. Um, but it's just, it's so interesting <clears throat> to me that throughout a journey of healing, I think nine months is a really interesting time. It is a gestational time, but it's also like enough time to really go into, into those traumatic dark places yeah. and, sh- and shine light. 
And when you don't, when you hit a wall and I'm, I'm not saying I did this perfectly at all over the last nine months. I definitely failed. I even got back together with the guy that I broke up with in February and then found out he was cheating on me the whole time. And just like, it was my lesson. I needed to go back. I needed to. Thank you universe for reminding me who he really is. Thank you universe for the reminder of the lesson. That's the gratitude and the bullshit right there. Exactly. And, and honestly, I'm even grateful that, um, you know, to be honest, I don't think that he's a terrible person. I think that he was exactly what I needed. And Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to the universe, to God for bringing me him at that particular time, because it really, it taught me so much about myself. And now after the second heartbreak, um, all over again, it didn't, I didn't go back down to that baseline. I didn't lose any weight. I didn't cry in my bed for three weeks and have to have my mom come and take care of me and my daughters. Like I, it, it was so much easier to just see things clearly yeah. because I'd already shown so much light on so many different areas of trauma and pain in my past. And I consciously get to choose now that I don't want to go back there. Yeah. And you have a really great baseline for knowing what kind of connection you do want and what it does feel like when it feels aligned and exactly what you don't want. And that's great information to have, especially after not having dated since before your ex-husband. Because right. you're different now, right? And so these, these right. lessons, you know, and, and to, to that point, we're constantly evolving and changing. And so I think to be able to look at ourselves through the lens of where are we at now? Versus, well, 20 years ago, this wouldn't have bothered me, or I could have handled this differently, or those foods didn't affect me before. It's like, okay, but what life has occurred since then that is impacting our entire e- ecosystem of our own life? Right. And I, I feel so much stronger also. And I, not that I was weak before or being sad no, or not about having, being weak. It's not about being weak, but I, so. Right. A few weeks after the second breakup, I was due to give my first TED talk. And I, so I just gave my first TED talk two weeks ago. I'm so excited for you for that. That was awesome. (laughs) And it was actually about a journey forward into the future, which is really cool that the, you know, this is the topic of your podcast because um, we get stuck and we get stuck living our life, looking in the rear view mirror instead of Mm -hmm looking forward. And what would happen in actual practice? If you drove on a highway, looking in the rear view mirror the entire time, you would crash, you would crash and burn. And that's essentially what we do in life too. Yeah. We spend so much time looking in the rear view and it's, it's important. We have those mirrors for a reason, right? We've got a rear view mm-hmm. mirrors for a reason, mm-hmm. but we're, they're not intended to stare. We, we are not supposed to stare into them the entire time that we're driving forward. And one thing that I, I learned is just putting yourself out there, just starting. You have to just put one foot in front of the other and just start. Yeah. Not going to always land on solid ground. You're not going to be perfect every single day. Like I, I talk a big game about my health and my wellness. I had pizza for lunch today because it's the only thing in my house. And I feel like crap now, but it's the only, I had to eat something. And I didn't have any time to make myself a like a delicious salad with like quinoa and a nice lean protein and like an organic dressing. I'm sorry. I don't eat like that all the time. <laughs> and that's okay. And I said, great, because we also need balance. Yes. It's so important. It's so important. And honestly, I think the best thing we can do as practitioners, as healers is help guide people to find their own balance. Because yes. once you find that, you know, one of the, one of the first small hinges that I have people do, it's really the only one that actually matters is why, why are you doing this? Why do you need to make change? Is it because you feel like crap? Is it because you want to be around for your kids and your grandkids and maybe even your great grandkids? You know, what is your why? Yeah. Get really clear on your why. And I know my why. I'm very, very clear on my why. And it's not just so that I can be a badass single mom to my three kids. It's not just so that I can manifest the 
some amazing, gorgeous six foot three, you know, <laughs> uh, br brilliantly, soulfully connected, really focused on his own growth type of man. Um, just so you guys know, I am still single, um, but <laughs> just putting it out there. And so it is out there, but it's really because I was, I feel like I was put on this earth for a bigger purpose than just myself. And obviously my kids are living their own purpose. And if I can help to shape their, the car that they're driving in and the roadmap for their future, that's great. But they've also been teaching me so much that I really feel like I have a greater purpose to help other people make small changes in their life that will give them a better outcome in their life, a better journey and, and place to journey towards. Lindsay, I, I love all of this so much. And I wish we did have like another at least three to four hours to keep talking because <laughs> There's, there's so much we could go in depth to in any one of these different areas. And, um, you know, to, to highlight that we focus on the, the past, the traumatic past implication of our current health, right? The, the mindset, the psychological implication of our current health, the physical, what you're doing, you're, the nutrition. I want to go get that inflammation test because I'm really curious about my body is going to respond with and decide if I want to consciously make choices or not. Once I have that information, I can have that informed choice and still go back the way I am. And that's fine too, you know, but whether it's the, you know, it's like the biopsychosocial, you know, implications of how are we? Mm. And there's no one answer, you know, and I love that you found great healing through the hypnotherapy, you know, that's amazing. And Plant medicine is also amazing. There, there's a there's room for all of it, mm. and I think one of the things that I really took away from everything you shared is keep yourself open to exploring different avenues and small things in different areas because it's not just one way. No, your body is different from my body, and your body is different today than it was a, even a week ago. And so right. we constantly like being an explorer in your own life. And we, we tend as wellness coaches, we tend to throw too much data and information at people instead of seeing an individual as an individual. And, yeah. and so it's important to keep that lens on everything that you do. You know, there's no perfect way of being, there's no perfect way of doing, there's no, you know, certain amount of water that you should be drinking per day. Like everybody says, oh, drink your half your body weight in water per day. And then magically you'll feel better. It's not, it's not the case for everybody. Cer certain people right. need other, other things um, in their life. And it's really just starting. It's trying, it's like that Shakira song, um, Try Everything. Remember that movie? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Birds don't just fly. They fall down and get up. And yeah. so that's, that's, we need to be like the Shakira's. <laughs> well, and you know, I, I do think that the most fundamental root of all of it, the most powerful component is going to be that mindset, mm -hmm. you know, because if we can be doing all of these different modalities for our own healing, and if we're not thinking any of it's going to quote work, then it's not. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, even though there's no hierarchical component to any of these things that we're talking about I do think the highest one has got to be mindset right totally. if we don't believe it's going to work then it's not going to work at all I love that donut study I talk about different mindset studies um with my clients and I've talked about it on the podcast by Aaliyah Crum and it's it's so fucking powerful Mm -hmm. And when we can get awareness, because then I, you know, for me being uh, focused on mindfulness is, okay, well, we, most people aren't even aware of what their mindsets are to even recognize if their mindset is in alignment with their values or their goals or their dreams or what they're seeking to heal or accomplish or produce in their life, right? They're just not even aware mm -hmm. of what they're thinking. And so to start with that awareness of what's not working right? That's got to be some baseline awareness of, well, what do I want to get to? What's that vision, right? Mm -hmm. Having clarity on that and being open and, and do all these little small things often. I love it. I'm so glad I met you. We were so meant to meet that day in the airport. Oh, it was such a perfect aligned moment. 
Lindsay, if people want to find out more about you and Small Hinges and the immortal healing that you're doing, what's the best resources? I know we'll have all these notes in the show notes, uh, links in the show notes as well. But what's, uh, you mentioned a little bit earlier, but just reiterate how people can connect with you further. They can definitely connect with me on smallhinges.health. So it's not .com, it's .health. And then you can follow me on Instagram um, at smallhinges. And if you want to email me, you can email info at smallhinges.health. And, you know, I, you can message me though on, on Instagram. I always get back to, to people. Um, The one thing I will say to your your last point is stay focused on the what you want, the what and why you, the, what you want for your life and why you want it and the, how figures itself out. I set the intention when I was leaving Florida that I wanted to be on more podcasts and I didn't know how that was going to happen. And then I sat next to you. And there it was. I didn't be on your podcast. So just take yourself out of the constantly trying to control every little detail of your life. Get focused on how you want your, what you want for your life and why you want it. And the rest will fall into place and definitely reach out to me. I'm, I'm so blessed to work with, with the people that I do. And honestly, I, I'm so blessed to have the friends and the new connections like you, Jory, um, in my life, because I, I feel like we all just vibe off of each other and this collective oh, energy yeah. that you're creating. I listened to a bunch of your podcasts the last couple of weeks, just to kind of get caught up. And I'm like, I don't even know who is I love the most. There are so many great yeah. people that you've talked to that you're shining a light on. And just, I feel so thank grateful you. to be one of those people now. Oh, thank you so much, Lindsay. And I can't wait to cross paths physically again, and we can connect and we need more of these light workers, right? And I do believe that these journey forward conversations has that ripple effect to help shift consciousness, shift awareness, shift in mindset and gratitude and mindfulness because the world so desperately needs it. Our our planet needs a reboot in their in its health and right. So this is the the being in service piece. It's not just about our own individual selves, but the ripple effect of what human looks like for for each other and our entire world consciousness. No, no small feat there, but that's the implication. And it's, um, yeah, it feels really powerful me, for me to have these conversations with people. It lights up my soul to be able to go deep and go quickly and be authentic and focus on these shared values and mindsets and outlooks on life. So thank you so much for being on. And if this spoke to you as uh, the audience who's listening We would love a rating, a review, a share, send it to someone who knows that they need to hear what we talked about today. Because again, the more people we can journey forward, the healthier and happier that we all will be. So thanks so much for coming on, Lindsay, and hope you all take care and be well. To continue your journey forward, find Jory Rose on Facebook and Instagram to become part of her growing community. You can also gain access to her meditations, books, online classes, or to sign up for an upcoming retreat, visit her at joryrose.com. That's J-O-R-E-E-R-O-S-E dot com.